Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part 21 of my fitness database series. Yes, folks, that means the fitness database is now old enough to legally drink in most states. I think all states now. <laughs> Anyways, whether or not you're building a database about fitness, doesn't matter. All of these tips and tricks and techniques are visible, visible, are usable in all databases, and I can't talk today. So follow along and enjoy. All right, first up today, we're gonna tackle a problem that a couple of you have emailed me about. When you open up the meal list, notice the top says breakfast, Rick Standard, right? The bottom is sitting on fish, veggies, fish, fish, rice, and veggies, and it's on record four of six. What's going on here? Well, this is one of those weird times when uh, the form doesn't properly load everything because we're doing some syncing in there with some code, but the record sets haven't loaded yet. Even if I do anything, if I press any key right now, even if I just hit like the escape key, look at that, the sync runs. It's weird, okay? And it's partially because when you load a form, if you've got a form that has subforms in it, those subforms load first. And so the subforms can't really get a hold of the parent data because it hasn't even, the record set hasn't even loaded yet for the parent when the subform loads. And if you got multiple nested subforms, that's that inside subform goes first. If you wanna test that, here's a copy of my tech help free template, right? You got the customer form. If we put the order form inside this one, here, watch this, I'll just demonstrate real fast, right? We'll take the order form, which has a subform in it, the order detail form, right? Take this, drag it into here, okay? Get rid of that label. Now we got the order form with its order detail form inside of the customer form, right? So save that, close it. Okay, here's the customer, here's the customer's orders. Go to the next customer's, customer's order, and so on. Right now, if we were to put code in here to show us which form loads first, watch what happens. Let's go to the form properties for the customer form. Go to the onload event. All right, I'll just message box customer in here. Okay, now let's do the same thing in the order form. And by the way, this is the view uh, project explorer if you don't use this. I don't use this a lot, but once in a while I do. If I wanna bounce around between the different objects in code. And then again in here, we'll go to the form load event message box order, right? And then one more time, we'll go to the detail section, order detail F. We'll go to the form before insert, we'll go to the form load event. It'll default to the load event unless you've already got another event. We already had a form before insert in here. All right, let's go to, uh, let's just put detail in this one. All right, so now I got an on load event in each of those three forms so we can see which one loads first. You ready? Save it, I haven't done this in a while. I'm hoping it still works this way. <laughs> some of the, Sometimes some of the things I learned by trial and error 10 years ago, they change. Let's just see, ready? Customer, okay, see, so detail loaded first, then order loaded, then customer loaded. None of them have displayed yet. And they're all three of them are. So the inner form gets its record set first. Obviously the IDs perpetrate through, right? Cause you gotta know the customer ID to get load the orders and then you gotta know the order ID to load the details. But as far as the actual form and the entire record set loading, those go in reverse. So how does that, what does that mean for our fitness database? Well, when this opens up, you sometimes get a discrepancy because you got a subform here, a subform there. This is technically the parent form, right? And just the, with the way the timing works, they don't always see each other's records properly. So it's a surprisingly simple fix, right? You can obviously click in here and then, you know, it starts working, right? But here's all you gotta do in the, open event or the load event. We already have an open event for the parent form. You can use the open event. All you have to do is just right after that, that checks to see if the food lord, is, food, food lord, <laughs> I am the food lord. If the food list is open, we got that line. But all we gotta do in here is just literally put the focus on one field, like the description field. And that's enough to trigger that event running and it syncs everything up nice. All right, watch. Ready? Boom, and now it works. See, it's it's this, these little quirks that you pick up over doing this for 10, what, 20 years now? So I just wanted to share that, because a lot of you have emailed me that, like, when we open up the form, it's not working. 
Another thing you guys have noticed is that when we click on the parent form, right, it syncs up that or not. This is technically the, the sub form. When you click on the list, the meal list, this synchronizes, but it doesn't go the other way. If I move between these, right, it's not synchronizing which one's highlighted up here. That's an easy fix. We're just going to reverse what we did up here, right? If you take a look at the on current event up here, this is that whole change the bookmark thing. We can just copy this and just flip it around. So copy that. Let's go to the on current event for the parent form. Okay, so it's going to be right here. All right, and it's just a little bit of a change. Paste that in. All right, now instead of looking at parent record set clone, we're going to look inside that sub form, this guy. All right, what's his name? His name is meal list F. All right, so we're going to say set RS equals meal list F dot form dot record set clone. Okay, and then the same thing is going to be down here. You're just going to say that. Set the bookmark of that to whatever's in the record set. Same thing, just in reverse. And now it should work just fine. If you click up here, it sinks on the bottom. If you move on the bottom, it sinks up top. Notice the little handle moving, see? See that? As you move between these records, it moves to the right one up top, so you know where you're at. Because that can be confusing to a user. Okay, one problem you got though is when you go to a new record. Okay, so we have to take that into consideration too. All right, so over here, we're going to check for a null value. So if is null meal ID, then exits up. Don't do it up top. You can't really go to a new record up top. Also, I'm going to throw this line in. If meal list F meal ID is equal to meal ID, then exits up. There's no reason to run the code. If they're identical, they really technically shouldn't be identical. Because if you change one up top, it changes the other one. But that's just, it's just a safeguard, just to make sure. And let's do the same thing in the other one. So the meal list F right here. Now this technically shouldn't ever be able to be null. Let me think. No, nah, it shouldn't be. It's an aggregate query and it won't have any null values in it. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this in here just in case because you never know what down the line you might change to maybe, you know, you could possibly add a blank record up here to make it easy for the users to see that you could add one. So I'm going to put the code in here while I'm thinking about it, even though right now it technically can't work. It's kind of like future proofing it. If is null uh, meal ID, then exit sub. Or you could have it go to a blank new record if you want to. Down the line, if we decide to do that, we will. If parent meal ID equals meal ID, then exit sub. And that's, again, just checking to say, hey, if, if they're already equal, you don't have to do this. All right, save it, debug, compile once in a while. And now it should be able to handle all that. Move around. Go, go, go. Yep. Go to the end. Looks good. Go to this one. Go to that one. If I hit my add new button, works good. Although, see, this is just sitting there, but I mean, at this point, there's nothing really we can do because there's no null records up here, right? Test, boom, and then it appears. So we're, we're good with that. All right, let's get rid of that. Oh, wait, oh, oh, can't delete with this form. Okay, we gotta delete with this one down here. Delete, there we go. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make our own delete button soon because I see, as you can see, when you delete stuff manually, it causes issues. We'll, we'll get there. Let me re refresh that. There we go. Okay. Got to make the delete and refresh buttons for this. There's one more thing I wanted to tackle today, though, and that, oh, yeah. If we double click here, it opens up the food list, right? And again, I got to make this wider so you can see everything. Right? Double click. Shows you over there. We can get rid of these. We don't need these. Now. Okay. All right. So what happens if I double click on this guy? Oh, yeah. That's a problem, isn't it? Okay. See? Because... We've got find first food ID equals null. We gotta always watch for those null values. You gotta always be thinking about null values. Okay? Even if it's something simple like bu building a prompt, you got, you know, uh, first name and last name and whatever. Well, if one of those whatevers anywhere in that string is null, the whole thing is null. 
So you always got to be thinking about that. You got to always be using NZs to convert them to blanks. Now, an easy solution here is just to check to see if food or is null food combo. Then we're going to do something else. And then we're going to do that. All right. So if it's not null, we can do the find first. If it is null, we want to add a new record. Now, I don't want to use add new. Do command dot, go to record, add new. That's fine for beginners. We're a little more advanced than that. We're using record sets, so let's stick with the record set motif. Forms, food, list, F, dot, record set, dot, anybody? Anybody familiar with record sets? Know what comes in here? Add new. Yeah, it's that simple. Ready? Save it. Close it. Close it. Ready? Double click. Boom. You're on a new one. And that cute. Now, members, we did a little something something in your extended cut one of those times where we hit add new and it doesn't make it look like it's like that. <laughs> right? It doesn't. If you hit add new, it doesn't it doesn't show up on the bottom. We have it so that it, it looks nicer and it puts you here. So in the extended cut, we're going to do that with this. So it doesn't look like this with just one line there. Okay. All right. So that'll be in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all the extended cut videos. You know the drill by now. That's going to do it for your tech help for part 21. Tomorrow in part 22, we're going to work on the delete and the requery buttons. And then very soon, hopefully, we're going to get into actually making the meal log. So you can actually log the stuff you're eating instead of just looking at it on the screen as a list of meals. We'll get there. We're get, I know I'm itching to get there myself. It's coming. All right. But that's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.